the 2008 Canadian Grand Prix. A race where by the end, the season was looking to have a lot, a lot of potential and it was looking very competitive. This is the unvaulting of the 2008 Canadian Grand Prix. So going into the race, Hamilton in his second season was leading the championship with 38 points. Kimi Raikkonen was only three points back with 35. His teammate Massa on 34 with the two BMW salaries of Kubica and Heidfeld on 32 and 20, rounding out the top five. Hamilton would try to bring the momentum from his last race into this race with him winning the 2008 Monaco Grand Prix. Ferrari would be leading the the Constructors' Championship with 69 points, 16 points ahead of McLaren, and 17 points ahead of BMW. Going into practice, or at the end of practice, Vettel would cash, crash out an FP3, meaning he couldn't start qualifying and would start at the back of the grid. Bourdais, Button, Sutil, and Fisichella would be out in Q1, and Jensen would be last after having a qualifying problem, which is very unlucky for Jensen. Bourdais would get a five-place grid penalty due to a gearbox change he'd have in an earlier practice session as well. The circuit Gilles Villeneuve had a dis integrating track surface for qualifying, meaning as qualifying went on, the times would actually get slower. The track officials would try to clear the debris from the disintegrating track surface uh, in between the qualifying sessions. Truly would spin twice in his Toyota in Q2, and along with his teammate Timo Glock, and Kazuki Nakajima, Nelson Piquet Jr., and David Coulthard would be eliminated out of Q2. Kubica would be on <coughs> provisional pole in Q3 in his BMW until Hamilton on his second quality lap would go fastest and start on pole by slightly over six tenths. Raikkonen would start in third. Alonso and his Renault in 4th, Rosberg in 5th with Massa in 6th, and Heidfeld 8th. The drivers would criticize the track about the track conditions in turn 2, the exit of turn 7, and the apex and exit of turn 10. Also the hairpin and turn 11 would start to deteriorate as well. After overnight track work to fix the track surface, Lewis would lead into turn one and hold that lead until the safety car would come out on lap 16 because of Sudo's engine failure, which would later catch on fire. All the drivers in the top five, uh, not including the Ferrari of Massa, would rush into the pit lane three laps later when the pit lane was open because they had a weird safety car pit lane open and closed uh, I, I don't know why the FIA implemented it but it's very confusing Reckonin and Kubica Kubit, would be the first two cars to, to get to the end of the pit lane but they would stop as the light at the end of the pit lane was still red as they waited for the red light to turn green, Hamilton was unsighted coming towards the end of the pit lane and he saw the red light too late, would try to go around Kubica and slam into the back of Raikkonen, taking them both out of the Grand Prix. Rosberg would uh, hit Hamilton and lose his front wing as well. Ferrari double stacked on the stop and Massa only could take tires because of a, of a refueling problem, which would mean he'd have to pit later again. Highfield would lead on lap 25 with only a one-stop strategy, while his teammate Kubica would have a two-stop strategy. Kubica would be in P10, 26 seconds behind Heidfeld, 
when Nick pitted on lap 28. Barrichello would take the lead and Heidfeld would exit just in front of Kubica. He would, Heidfeld would hold up Kubica for a whole lap until he would move out the way going into turn one to let his teammate on lower fuel by. He would hold up Alonso and the Toyotas, which were the last two cars that would be in front of Robert by the time the pit stops would cycle through, would pit on lap 30 and 41, and Kubica would receive a, a radio from, from his race engineer that stated he had 10 seconds to push as hard as he could so they could try to come out in front of Nick. PK would... Now Kubik is going to have to increase the gap to Nick. Correct, because... We need 10 more laps, big push. Yeah, that's okay. Retire on lap 40 because he had brake issues. Renna would be worried about the same brake issues happening to Alonso's brakes as well, and Alonso would spin at turn seven and crash out a few years later as he would get front wing and suspension damage. Robert Kubica would pit in with, 20, with a 26 and a half second gap ahead of his teammate on lap 48. Kubica would easily exit ahead of Heidfeld, and he would cruise to his first and only Grand Prix victory at the height of BMW's power and prowess, getting BMW their first win as well, and Heidfeld would take second place in a BMW Sabre 1-2. It was Kubica's redemption after his heart-shattering crash last year at the same track, and he would retake the champ and he would take the championship lead for the first time. Coulthard would get his final podium, finishing third for Red Bull. Timo Glock would finish fourth, Massa fifth, and Glock sixth and Trilly sixth. BMW Saber's win or Kubitz's win, per se would break the drought for a German constructor winning the Grand Prix, with the last German constructor winning the 1962 French Grand Prix, in which Dan Gurney won in his Porsche. Rosberg and Hamilton were given 10 place grid penalties for the next race in France after their pit lane shenanigans. Kubica, like I said earlier, would lead the championship. He'd have 42 points, and Massa and Hamilton would be tied on 38, with Massa being in second to Lewis being in third. Raikkonen would be in fourth with 35 points, and Heidfeld would be fifth in 28. Ferrari would retain the lead of the constructors with, Sa uh, with BMW Sauber three points behind, and McLaren 20 points behind them. Now, this was the unvaulting of the 2008 Canadian Grand Prix. If you want to see more videos like this and even make this into a series, like the video and subscribe. If you didn't like the video, tell me why in the comment section down below. This is Lewis. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.